Now to get that desired swing back and forth as the camera follows the player, uh, that's already done for us. If we look at this smooth follow camera script, pretty much everything we need is right here. So what I'm going to do is go into my script that I'm creating and down here in the late update in the else block I'm going to comment out the positioning line and the lookout line. I'm going to come down and make a few spaces underneath the resetting of the X and Y. And I'm just going to go ahead and actually cut and paste all of this here part in. Now again it is written in Java script so we will have to convert some stuff but that's fine. I'm just going to tab stuff in to line it up. So here's the first one. We're going to want to create its data type since it's not defined anywhere else and if you look in the script here it tells you what they've defined at the start. So anything that's not defined up here we are and is used down here we are going to have to tell it what type of data it's supposed to hold. So this one here since it's returning the Y out of the uh, Euler angles we know that's a float. And the wanted height should be a float. The current rotation angle, again, another float. And the current height, which will be a float. So the rotation. Now we've already done rotation angle, it's up here. And as you can see, we're using model development, shows you that it's already being used. Uh, the damp height, which is not being used yet. Oh, yes it is. So we don't have to define that. And I'm just quickly reading through to make sure that there's no, uh, let's say like new vector threes that need the new word in front of it. So the current rotation is not being used anywhere, but we looked at this earlier. Uh, this here function returns uh, another quaternion. And the person who wrote the script likes to leave a space in between the function name and the parameter list after it. Uh, I don't, so I'm just going to get rid of them. It's no real biggie. Basically whatever your boss tells you to do, that's what you do. Okay, now he's using transform here. I'm going to come through later and switch these transforms over to our cached version, which is our underscore my transform. But I'll just quickly tab these in so they're at the right spot. And it would have been so much easier just to select them all and hit tab. But I had to go through them anyway to make sure everything was right. Now here's an instance where we don't have to put the new in front of it because it's using a predefined vector 3. And then always look. Okay, so let's go through next and do all the transforms and switch them to our cached version, my transform. And nothing there. We're good here. We're good there. Right here is an instance we need to switch. So that's good. Right here we'll have to switch. And this is basically all you have to do when you're converting scripts from JavaScript to C Sharp. So we got all that down. Now there's going to be a few uh, errors that we're going to get for some of these parameters that he's defined up here that we haven't defined. Now we have our own height. Uh, we don't have a distance. We have a walk distance and a run distance. And right now we're just focusing on the, the walk distance. But we don't have the dampenings. So we're going to cut, copy those. Come all the way up to the top. And we'll paste them in right here. Now we'll want to switch these over to C sharp type, uh, style of variable. So we're going to say public. And by looking at it, it's supposed to be a float. And don't forget to put your F on the end or you're going to get it trying to use a double on you. And an F. 
Now, what these do is they add that little delay between uh, when your camera's swaying back and forth. Uh, smaller numbers will give you a longer delay. Larger numbers will give you a fast or a shorter delay. But we'll go over that when we're t testing it out. So let's come down here again and distance right here. We're using walk distance. If I spell it right. And let's just go into Unity and see if we have any errors left. We have a couple. I'm able to convert. Uh, that's nothing. I'm not worried about that. All right. So right here, what what is happening is in JavaScript, you can replace just one variable in a vector three. And without going too much in behind the scenes, basically what JavaScript is doing is creating a copy of it and then reassigning the values to it and copying it back over. So you can do the exact same thing, but you have to actually type it out in C sharp. So we're going to get my transform dot position dot X. We're going to take the current height to sign to Y. And then we're also going to take the my transform dot position dot Z and make sure to delete the dot Y here. So that's what it looks like in C sharp. A little more typing, but like I said, it does the exact same thing for you in JavaScript behind the scenes. This way here, you have a little bit more control over how it happens. So I'm going to hit clear, go to my scene, start it up. And as we walk and turn, We'll notice that the camera now sways along behind us like we wanted. And let's just quickly go to our main camera. And if you switch the rotation dampening to say, you know, 30, it should be very quick now, as you can see. So just fiddle around with the values till you find the one you like. And right now I'm pretty happy with the way the script's working. Uh, there's other stuff I definitely want to add to it, but I want to keep the tutorial series progressing along. We can always come back and add more stuff to it later. So in the next tutorial, we're going to start looking at the input manager and we're still going to be working with this script, but I want to switch things over. So we're not basically hard casting and what we're getting, getting our values from. And instead we'll just use the input manager. So I'll see you then. Bye-bye.